Hello, this is Yeshua said my name. This will be another video yet exposing the heresies of the Pope of Rome. And in this video, I want to explicitly study how the Popes of Rome down through the centuries have claimed to be God on earth. Now you'll go to many, I've noticed Catholic uh, websites or Catholic chat rooms and forums and Protestants will come on these forums and chat rooms and ask Catholics, has the Pope indeed throughout the centuries claimed to be God on earth or claimed divinity? And of course, the Catholics will come back and defend themselves and say, no, he has never claimed that. However, all through the catechism, all through out of the mouths of the popes themselves down through the centuries, they have claimed to simply, they have claimed to be not only the representative of God on earth, but God himself. Now, uh, actually, what was it? Uh, Pope John Paul. The second actually was quoted as telling people, you do not have to go to God for forgiveness of sins. You can come to me. So why was he stating that? He was stating that because in the Catholic doctrine, you cannot go directly to God. As a matter of fact, Pope Francis even stated that to have a, a personal relationship with Jesus is considered dangerous. They want Satan wants to usurp the place of Christ being your only mediator and have the masses believe they have to go to a priest or go to the Pope in order to be heard or by God or to approach God. They also use Mary and the saints and everything else. They do not believe that you can go straight to the Lord in prayer and pour out your heart. But Pope Paul was quoted as saying, come to me, not God, for forgiveness of sins. Now, when Jesus walked the earth, he forgave sin on earth and he was accused of blasphemy for this. And the Teachers of his day, including the Sanhedrin, said to Jesus, who but God can forgive sin? This man blasphemes. He forgives sin. And Jesus told them, I have the power on earth to forgive sin. But they accused him of blasphemy and wanted to stone him for this. But yet the Pope of Rome can sit in the Vatican telling people that he's not only the replacement of God on earth, he is God on earth. He has one consistatory as God that he is not only the vicar of Christ, but the Christ in the flesh. And we're going to go through these quotes and show you this. Um, but yet he's not accused of blasphemy. Go, come to me to confess your sins. Go to a priest, the altar Christos, the altar Christ, and confess your sin. Never are they encouraged to go directly to Christ. Go through Mary, go through the saints, go through the popes, go through your Catholic priest. It says in scripture, Jesus is the one mediator between God and men. It doesn't say one of the mediators between God and men. It says the one mediator between God and men is the man Christ Jesus. In this quote here that I've had up on the screen, this is just one of many quotes. I mean, I could spend all day doing videos just on the, the popes of Rome claiming to be God or claiming to be the one that you go to in place of Christ. Uh, Pope claims to be God. The Pope and God are the same, so he has all power in heaven and on earth. Now, this is a direct quote from Pope Pius V, and down here is your source. So I wanted to quote you a scripture from Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Matthew 28, 18. And I will put this scripture down in the description section of the video. For those of you who may be questioning what the Pope has said here, you may be new to this, maybe you're Catholic and you're looking into these things and you've stumbled across this channel. Jesus said here in Matthew 28, 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. What has Pope Pius V claimed here? The Pope and God are the same. He, and so he has all power in heaven and earth. So who's speaking the truth to you? Pope Pius V, who is supposed to be infallible, who Catholics are taught they're supposed to trust the Pope without questioning him, or is the Lord Jesus Christ telling you the truth? You can't sit on the fence. The scripture says, cursed is the one who puts his trust in man. To put your trust in a Pope, a pastor, a priest is to be cursed according to the word of God. Jesus is the only one you need. He told his disciples, you have one teacher, the Christ. He is sufficient for you. And what he did on the cross opened the door for you to approach God in person, face to face, in a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship. Pope Francis stated it's dangerous to have a relationship with Christ. Now, if this isn't the words of the dragon, if this isn't the words of Lucifer being spoken, I don't know what is. 
And I don't care what this man looks like on the outside, what fine robes he wears, the degrees he has on his wall, how many bishops and cardinals elected him in the conclave. I don't care. That doesn't matter. If he disagrees with the word of God, he's wrong and he's preaching heresy. It's as simple as that. That's why the Reformation started over 500 years ago. The reformers came up against the Catholic Church and said, what you are preaching is heresy. It is blasphemy. Yet when Christ came preaching and saying some of the things the popes are saying to forgive sins, that they're God on earth and all that, they wanted to stone Jesus and accuse him of blasphemy. They wanted to put him to death. But yet the Pope of Rome can come here claiming these things and no one in the secular or Christian world seems to be accusing him of blasphemy. The Protestant churches, which are the harlot daughters of Revelation 17, are aligning themselves with the papacy in Rome and seeing no problem with it. If you backtrack, I've done a couple videos lately um, called the Together Generation 2018, and there'll be another one, I think, coming up in D.C. this year, where all the Protestant churches are coming together, and Pope Francis is endorsing this Together Generation movement uh, and calling it an ecumenical movement between Catholics and Protestants, and that, it, and, and he's endorsing it. I'm sorry, but anyone who aligns themselves with the Vatican, aligns themselves with the papacy uh, for the name of peace and harmony uh, and understanding and world unity, that sends up red flags to me. Red flags. Jesus said, again, in Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. It is not biblical that Christ left a, a mere human being on earth to take his place on earth and claim that he has all power in heaven and on earth. So I wanted to show you this and look at this man exalting himself above all that is called God in these pictures. He's, you know, he sits on these thrones with, with uh, like, almost like the ancient pharaohs did claiming to be raw on earth with the, being fanned by his, his um, subjects here being paraded on these thrones and things like that. The man is worshiped. And it says in Revelation that all whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life will worship the beast. They'll stand in awe of the beast and worship the beast. To worship this man means to give him in your heart the same place that you would give Christ. To attribute the titles and names that belong to Christ alone to a man sitting on a throne in the Vatican and Vatican city state. And Revelation 17, 18 clearly shows the Pope of Rome to be antichrist. He is the one prophesied in Daniel as coming from those who destroyed the city and the temple, which was the Roman armies under Titus in 70 AD. Those were the Romans. You are to look through the, from the Roman empire for that final man of sin to be produced from the earth. Now, I believe every Pope of Rome is an antichrist. And when Jesus said in Matthew 24, many would come in my name claiming to be Christ. I believe this is a direct uh, fulfillment of the Popes of Rome because each one has claimed to be divine, has claimed to be God on earth. So let's go to um, uh, this website here called the Protestant Reformation, the past, the present, the future. And let's look at some of these quotes that are mentioned here. It's, you know, the Pope claims to be God on earth. So please visit these, these uh, websites that I have up here and look for yourself. Study the quotes that are coming, not just from Protestant sources, but from the mouths of the popes themselves and cardinals and bishops that have written literature from the catechism and so on, claiming to worship the Pope as God. As a matter of fact, St. Catherine of Siena made a statement one time where she said, even if the Pope is the devil himself, even if he's Satan himself incarnate, we are not to question him, but simply to rest our heads on his chest. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I missed something here and yet she's claiming to be Christ-like, she's claiming to represent God, you, you know, I and yet people don't see a problem with this. And yet St. Catherine of Siena's head is still mummified, I believe, in the Vatican and kept under a glass uh, display case for people to see. It's disgusting. It's necromancy. It is, it's idolatry. It's, it's, uh, gosh, I, I mean, I, I, I just go all day into this. It's just, it is such a hot topic with me. It's unbelievable. It says here in this article, throughout the centuries of Rome's existence, the popes have regularly claimed to be divine. As the supposed successor of Peter, the Pope claims infallibility. Now, the supposed successor. Peter was never documented as being in Rome. Never documented as being in Rome. So where the Catholics get this, they're they're making up this doctrine out of nowhere, just like purgatory and praying to Mary and, and everything else. Uh, the assumption of Mary, 
the Immaculate Conception, none of which is taught in scripture, and neither is it taught in scripture that Peter would have successors in the name of Christ. When Jesus spoke to Peter, he told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. Jesus was talking about himself being the rock that the church was built on. There is no other foundation, scripture says, that the church is built on but the Lord Jesus Christ. He never pointed to one of his apostles and said, you are the foundation. You are the rock that we will build the church on. And you will be the first of many successors that will be me in the flesh on the earth with all power in heaven and earth. When did Christ say this in the scriptures? So as the supposed successor of Peter, the Pope claims infallibility. And that's another thing. Don't question the Pope. Just take him at his word. You don't have to study the scriptures. You don't have to test everything. Just take him at his word because after all, he's infallible. He's God on earth. The position of God on earth and the ability to judge and excommunicate angels. Now this is, again, when he said the Pope claims to have power, all authority in heaven, there are quotes stating that the Pope believes he can command angels. He actually, during the Eucharist, during the transubstantiation, believes that a priest can command Christ to come down off his throne and become the actual body and blood of and bread of the Eucharist. This is heresy. This is not taught in the scriptures. And here we have a quote here. Um, uh, let me see from let me see a letter from Cardinal Giuseppe Sarto, who became Pope Pius X in 1903, as quoted Cardinal Salto, who became Pope Pius X, said this. The Pope represents Jesus Christ himself. And then it goes on to say he is not merely the representative of Jesus Christ. He is Jesus Christ in the flesh. This belief has so assimilated into society's thinking that it is believed by many beyond Catholic circles. Yes, that's true. I've spoken to many even in a church that I attended, that see no problem with the Pope. They simply believe that he is just another Christian denomination. And while I was attending this church and teaching in classes, I tried so hard to get across to people that I'm not judging. I'm not trying to pick this apart and find fault and be hateful. What I'm trying to do is expose to people who the Pope of Rome really is, according to the scriptures. And quit aligning yourselves as the harlot daughters with Rome come out of that system. Come out of aligning yourselves with him. Renew your mind and your thinking by the word of God. According to time, Pope Paul II's assassination attempt prompted a young Jewish man to say, shooting the Pope, it's like shooting God. Now this is coming from a Jewish man. So how easy would it be for the Pope of Rome to unite the world together under one government, under one religion, and have the world's religions come together, especially the three monotheistic faiths, they say, come together in an ecumenical move for harmony and peace and everybody get along and love each other under the Pope of Rome and say, oh, we all serve the same God. How easy would this be? So this young man said, shooting the Pope, it's like shooting God. And there have been other quotes where uh, the Pope has visited, I, I believe it was a shrine in India, and one of the people there visiting the shrine or watching the Pope visit the shrine actually said, seeing Pope Francis and touching him is like seeing Jesus and touching Jesus. Now, this has been documented. They, they are worshiping the beast. And what we do in this channel is trying to alert people to the heresies, the blasphemies, and open their eyes to who the Pope of Rome really is. Okay. Before I go on, I want to share something interesting with you. The Pope actually, uh, he tweeted something uh, a few days ago, and I answered his tweet. And he was talking about Mary and how we need to go to Mary. She's our life, our sweetness, our hope. And I posted a tweet, and I answered him saying, no, in all capitals, Jesus is all we need. And you have to preach Jesus to the people and tell them that you must be born again. And do you know? He actually, I, I checked my tweet feed uh, a few hours later, and the Pope actually liked my tweet. Now, I don't see that as a positive thing whatsoever. I believe that uh, this channel is known in Rome and the Vatican, and I've had a couple sources email me and tell me that that's very possible, that my channel is being watched, and I've got this on credible sources. I believe that the Pope liking my tweet when I said that. Out of all the thousands of people that commented on his tweets, he never responds and he doesn't hit the like button very much. He just puts his tweets out and goes on about his day, it looks like. But when I posted that and said, no, don't feed them Mary, tell them Christ is all you need and that they must be born again. That's the gospel. Well, why did he like my tweet? I believe it was a way for him in between the lines to say, I'm paying attention to you. I know who you are. 
It was a way of letting me know and acknowledging that he knows who I am without coming out and saying it. So you know what? I hope they are watching this channel. I hope they know that not everyone is fooled by the blasphemies going on and the heresies and that the Holy Spirit indwells his people and is opening up the eyes of his people to stand up and overcome this system by the word of their testimony and the blood of the lamb. I hope they are watching. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I thought it was an indication between the lines that, that, you know, out of all the people that are posting thousands that he happens to hit the like button on my tweet. I think that's a message in between the lines, but that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that's the case, but anyway, uh, further quotes from the Vatican documents show the papacy's belief in papal infallibility. And you can go on down the page here. Um, this is an ancient Catholic document that says, take care that we lose not that salvation, that life and breath, which thou hast given us. So they're crediting the Pope as giving you life and breath. I'm sorry, but the scriptures say that in God's hand is the breath of every living thing. Not the Pope of Rome. For thou art our shepherd, thou art our physician, thou art our governor, thou art our, our husbandman, thou art finally another God on earth. And this is from a 1512 document. And uh, let, let's go on down here. Recently in 2004, Bishop Patrick Dunn said, it seems that Pope John Paul now presides over the universal church from his place upon Christ's cross. Really? So the Pope of Rome is, is, is considered just as good as if he were Christ hanging on the cross for me? Sorry, not buying it. The gloss of extravagantes, Pope John the 22nd says, but to believe that our Lord God, the Pope, the establisher of said decretal and of this could not decree as he did decree should be accounted heretical. In other words, in, in layman's terms, in modern English, what he's saying here is if you don't agree with the Pope, then you're a heretic. That's basically what he's saying. But if the Pope decrees it, then you're supposed to go along with it without questioning. Now, here are some quotes from the Popes themselves. Pope Boniface said, Furthermore, we declare, we proclaim, we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman pontiff. Sorry, not this one. You didn't hang on the cross for me. Uh, it says here, um, going down, um, Pope Leo said these things about the role of the papacy in the Roman church. Our thoughts went out towards the immense multitude of those who are strangers to the gladness that filled all Catholic hearts, some because they lie in absolute ignorance of the gospel. Well, hold on right there for a second. They're, they're the ones who won't even allow scriptures in the churches. If you go into any Catholic church to this day, you will not find the word of God in their pews. As a matter of fact, even during the Reformation, if there was a Bible there, and I say if, because some churches didn't even have that unless it was under lock and key behind closed doors, they would have the Bible on an altar chained so that the average, what they called, quote unquote, layman did not have access to the scriptures. So they're upset because they're ignorant of the gospel. Well, put the word of God in the church pews and let them read the gospel straight out of Christ's own mouth. Oh, they won't do that, will they? Others, because they dissent from the Catholic belief, though they bear the name of Christians. What makes you a Christian is not sitting under a Roman pope in a Roman Catholic church going to confession to everyone else but Christ. What makes you a Christian and a child of God is being born again of the spirit of God having his spirit live in you. Jesus said, you will not see the kingdom of heaven unless you are born again. Sitting in a church, sitting under a pastor's teaching, even if you're a Protestant, getting baptized, getting Christian, does not make you a child of God. I can't stress that enough. So going on and on down here, um, there are quotes uh, from the popes themselves and how people compare the Pope to Jesus himself. And I've already, I've already uh, shared some of that with you, but please feel free to go to rekindling, rekindle the reformation.com and, um, and check this link out and it'll go through all the quotes with you. Um, here we go. The last one I'll read from here, 1996. Uh, this quote was stated here. Uh, we readily understand the devotion of St. Francis of Assisi for the Lord Pope. Notice the capital here. The daughterly outspokenness of St. Catherine of Siena towards the one whom she called sweet Christ on earth. Now, St. Catherine of Siena was the one I told you about that they still have a mummified head of her encased in glass. <laughs> and she said, she told people that uh, even if the Pope were Satan himself, that we're not to question. We're simply to obey and rest our heads on his shoulder. Right. Okay. Wow. Uh, the apostolic obedience, okay, meaning just the complete obedience to the Pope 
uh, and the Centaur Come Ecclesia of St. Ignatius Loyola, who started the Jesuits. All right. St. Ignatius Loyola started the Jesuit order. And if you backtrack in this channel, I do go through the Jesuit oath and what the Jesuit order is for those of you who are new subscribers and the joyful profession of faith made by St. Teresa Avila. I am a daughter of the church. So you're not a daughter of Christ. You're the daughter of the church. Okay. So we, we go on down here and they, uh, people compare the Pope with Jesus. And there's a video here where the, a nun is speaking uh, after the Pope has visited. And, you know, blasphemy and flattery she uses to describe being with the Pope is like being with Christ, she says. And it's it's just utter, it's utter blasphemy. Um, I want to get into uh, some scripture verses here of uh, the Antichrist and uh, how the Antichrist is uh, uh, spoken of openly in the scriptures here very clearly. And it defines what an Antichrist is and who the Antichrist, the final man of sin, is and how uh, he is described in the scriptures. John, 1 John 2, 22, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Now, how is the Pope doing this? He claims to be Christ in the flesh on earth. All through the centuries, the papal dynasty claims to be Christ in the flesh on earth. There is only one Christ who came in the flesh, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. To deny that he is the only unique son of God that came in the flesh is to deny the father and the son. This makes the pope an antichrist. It makes him and one of them the final antichrist or man of sin. He denies that Jesus himself is the unique son of God that alone came in the flesh. They claim, all the popes claim, they are the son of God come in the flesh. Matthew 24, Jesus said, many will come in my name claiming I am he, I am Christ, and deceive many. All right. It says here, 1 John 4, 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. The popes all claiming they are Christ come in the flesh, they're not of God. It says it right here. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already it is in the world. This spirit, this mystery of iniquity of the Antichrist has been going on through the papal dynasty down throughout the centuries. And uh, they, they don't hide it. All right. Let's see here. I really wanted to get down to Daniel. Daniel 7, uh, verses 7 and 8. All right. This is Daniel's vision of the Antichrist the papal dynasty, and even the final man of sin, okay, for those of you who are new to this. In the book of Daniel, it was prophesied that the thought that the man of sin that would be prophesied, according to Paul and Revelation, would come from the Romans, the Roman Empire. It says here, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. A little horn is a small power. And Daniel says that this little horn power would become great with a small people. Vatican City State is the smallest country in the world, as far as I know. It's a small people, a small city state, a small established people. And this little horn, this little horn power would become great amongst his fellows, would become great in the world with a small people and would come in peaceably and come in with flatteries. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Now this shows different kingdoms. These other horns, these three horns, were kingdoms that came before this little horn antichrist power came to the surface. And going on down here, and it says, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces, and it stamped the residue with the feet of it, and was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. This is describing the last day's Roman Empire. Okay, it's describing those who destroyed the city and the temple in 70 AD under the Roman armies of Titus. Okay, uh, and in Matthew 24, Jesus comes down here to talk about how false Christ, false prophets will show great signs and wonders, insomuch if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. These signs and wonders, the between what the Vatican purports, the papal dynasty has purports um, purported. Uh, with this UFO alien phenomena, with all these new age teachings and demonic signs and lying wonders, if it were possible, it could deceive the elect. If you do not have the spirit of God living inside you, if you are not a born again Christian, a child of God, Jesus said you will be deceived. That it will be so good if it were possible, even the elect, his own born again body of believers could be deceived by these lying signs and wonders and by these false doctrines being taught. 
It says here, Daniel 8, 9 to 12, and out of one of them came forth a little horn. Now that's talking about the Antichrist power. He comes up small with a small people. He comes in with flatteries and comes in peaceably, looking like a lamb. This is modern Vatican City State. The little horn of Daniel being the prophesied man of sin. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above all gods, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. So what this is saying here is that this little horn power, this antichrist power will rise up with a small people, and he will speak blasphemies against the most high, that he will speak marvelous things against the God of gods. And shall prosper. So what we don't like to hear is that this, this little horn power, this Antichrist power, dynasty of popes, will prosper, it says, until the indignation be accomplished. So until Christ comes back to the Mount of Olives, according to Zechariah, and his feet touch the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives splits in two, this little horn power, this Antichrist power, will succeed until the time of the end. The Lord is not out of control to let this happen. He is in complete authority and control. All power has been given to him in heaven and on earth. He knows what he's doing. And this is all to accomplish his prophetic word. So what we need to do is stand strong with the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb and stand. Once we've done all, you stand. So it says here uh, that he will not regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. Now this, nor the desire of women I believe comes from the fact that popes don't marry. They don't have the desire for marriage. They don't have the desire of women. And I believe that this is a direct revelation of Daniel from God to tell you what one of the characteristics of the papacy in Rome is that we are to look for. They don't regard the desire of women. They don't regard the desire to marry. Okay. They're, they just don't. Nor regard any God for he shall magnify himself above them all. Now for the Pope to say in this statement here, all right, that he will regard no God and claims to be above them all. What did Pope Pius V say here? The Pope and God are the same, so he has all power in heaven and on earth. Does that not fulfill what we just read in Daniel? He is, he's literally fulfilling this. Um, let's look at some of these quotes here. I, I know this is a long video, but I, I wanted to make it in-depth for those of you who are bearing with the length of this video, who are truly seeking to understand this. Uh, I, I feel like this passion to get this out to people. I cannot stress this enough that when you are dealing with the Pope in Rome, you are dealing with the revealed man of sin that scripture talked about. And can I prove this to you? No. All I can do is use the testimony of what God has taught me and use his word to show you this. Uh, let's go to the uh, over here. This is actually someone's statement that they made. It looks like on their Facebook page. Uh, let me just read these to you in ending this video. On April 30th, 1922, Pope Pius XI said, you know that I am the Holy Father. Uh, to claim to be the Holy Father is to take the title of God, the representative of God on earth, the vicar of Christ, which means that I am God on earth. And this comes from Revelation 4 Views, a parallel commentary, page 288. Now that's out of the mouth of a Pope. How is this not blasphemy? God himself is obliged to abide by the judgment of his priest and either not to pardon or to pardon according as they refuse or give absolution. The sentence of the priest proceeds and God subscribes to it. Dignities and duties of the priest, volume 12, page 27. Um, what? <laughs> wow. See, this is going along with what he said here, that he has all power in heaven and on earth. This is what they're claiming in these quotes. Okay, so this is this is right here in front of you. All right, I wanted to show you this. And Daniel 7.25, that he would think to change times and laws. Well, this was fulfilled with the Sabbath being taken from Saturday to Sunday, uh, the Ten Commandments being changed. So, I mean, again, I, I could just go on for hours showing you the different ways he's changed times and laws. Uh, it says here, um, in the mouth of a Catholic quote, Fulfilling the words of Daniel, the Pope has power to change times, to abrogate laws, and to dispense with all things, even the precepts of Christ. Decretal de translat, episcopal cap, and it says here, it would think to change times and laws, Daniel 7.25. And what do they say right below it? The Pope has the, chimes to <laughs> has the power to change times and laws and to abrogate laws and dispense with all things, even the precepts of Christ. What did Daniel prophesy here about the Antichrist? Hmm. 
We are seeing this fulfilled in our time. And to be honest, to not see this, if you're a born again Christian, I believe that Okay, it's it literally it has to take the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal this to you. Honestly, I, I don't believe even my sharing this, it may plant seeds, but it will take the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal this to people, which is what I pray happens. Pope Nicholas, I declared the appellation of God has been confirmed by Constantine on the Pope, who being God with a capital G cannot be judged by man. Okay, and here's your quote, here's your source. The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, he is Jesus Christ himself, hidden under the veil of the flesh. That's out of the mouth of a Pope, Catholic Nas National, July 1985. Pope Leo the 13th said, we hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. <laughs> you know, I literally, this is being fulfilled and, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, these blasphemous quotes. Pope John Paul II the mystery of salvation is revealed to us and is continued and accomplished in the church. And from the, this genuine and single source, like humble, useful, precious, and chaste water, it reaches the whole world. Dear young people and members of the faithful, like Brother Francis, we have to be conscious and absorb the fundamental and revealed truth consecrated by tradition. There is no salvation outside the church. Really? Hmm. I beg to differ. From her alone, there flows surely and fully the life-giving force destined in Christ and in his spirit to renew the whole of humanity. Now, the church didn't die for you, whether it's a Catholic or Protestant church. Christ died for you. Jesus said, I am the way, singular, the truth, singular, and the life, singular. Never did he say that in his followers is found salvation, that in a church label or denomination is found salvation, Christ alone is your salvation, period. He didn't just lead you to the way of salvation. Jesus is salvation. He is salvation. But yet these popes can quote these blasphemous things and no one calls them and no one calls them up for that. No one holds them accountable for that. Just a few maybe in, in the Protestant denominations that aren't afraid to speak out for fear of backlash. All right. In Matthew 28, 18, again, Jesus said and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. So if anyone in the Vatican City or Rome is aware of this channel, or my tweet was happened to be liked because that was a message between the lines that they know of me, good. I hope so. Maybe someone hearing this channel, hearing these videos, is hearing the truth of the gospel. The Lord says in Revelation, come out of her, my people. So if you're hearing this and you're part of this Vatican system and you're listening to these videos, my prayer for you is that a seed is being planted for the truth of God and that God's Holy Spirit will open your eyes and draw you out. The Pope sitting in Rome is not your God. He is not your savior. He did not create heaven and earth. And there is power given only to Christ in heaven and on earth. All power. Scripture tells you that to put your trust in a man is to be cursed. I hope this opens the eyes of some people today. Uh, I, I know this video was lengthy. I appreciate those of you who have followed all the way through. It needs to be said. And recap and refresher videos on this topic will be made for new subscribers or people coming across this channel for the first time to keep it fresh in the minds of people. And I pray that you will please like and subscribe. Uh, you know, that you will please pass these videos along to people that need to hear it, please. Uh, it, it's my passion from the Holy Spirit to get this message out. <laughs> I, I just feel a passion about it, guys. Uh, if you have not been receiving notifications for the videos on this channel, please go back and check that the bell on the right hand side is clicked so that you'll receive notifications. I've been getting messages on the comment section as well as in, in emails telling me that you are that they're not getting notifications for new videos. So please make sure that you have uh, hit not only the like button, but subscribe and hit the bell to get updates on when new videos come out. Thank you for passing these messages along. Uh, thank you for your prayers and thank you for your support of this channel. This message needs to get out. God bless you. And one final thought. You are not a child of God simply because you are a creation of God. I can't stress this enough.
another teaching coming out of the Vatican is we're all children of God. No, we're not. You are a child of God if you are born again of God's spirit. Jesus said you must be born again. We are all creations of God. We are not all children of God. So which are you going to believe? A pope or a priest or the word of God? Which is it? You must make that choice. Me, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and choose his word above any man, no matter what their degrees, no matter what their outward appearance is. I don't care how big their ministry is. If they don't speak the words of God, they're speaking blasphemy. Thank you for listening today. God bless you.